Hello Warriors, welcome to a new video. Today we are going to be talking about what is the best baton in the entire world? Which one is the fastest, the strongest, the best for you? We'll find out in this video. If you guys have been following us for a while, you definitely now know that the telescopic baton is the best self-defense weapon against knives, against guns, against bare hands, against pepper sprays. Now you definitely know that it is the best weapon. We talked about the advantages and why it is for us the best weapon in other videos, so definitely check that out before we watch this one. Today we are not going to be talking about advantages, we are most going to be talking about how to pick the right one, because chances of you actually trying to buy a baton in this day and age is probably hard. There's one million and six brands, many sizes, the way, how do I pick? Well, this is what we are going to answer in this video. Keep watching till the very end and then you can pick the best one. What is the best baton in the entire world? The one that you carry with you. I know, how smart are we, right? No, guys, uh, actually, it is the true answer because it doesn't matter if I do have the best, the fastest, the most cool-looking baton in the entire world when I have it in the backpack or at home or not even with me. It doesn't really matter. So, the best one will always be, no matter how heavy, how fast, how big it is, it's going to be the one that you carry with you because that will be the baton that you will use in the situation when your life is put into risk. Most of the people, when they are choosing their baton, they will try to pick the one that is the biggest one, the most scary one. What it is going to do is that you are going to buy some baton that almost looks like an entire sword. Maybe even like this one. Uh, you can see the size of it. It's very heavy as well. And this is what most people choose. I'm not saying it's wrong, but what is it going to do? Many people then just rather leave it at home in the car, in the backpack, because it's too heavy. Not everyone wants to every day go outside and have one kilo of steel in their pocket. That's why they are a result in putting in the backpack. But like we said before, the one that is in the backpack is not the best one. Rather than picking the most heavy one, pick one that you can carry every single day from the entire of your life. So it has to be something maybe light, that you even if you are going out for a walk with a dog, you will have it and it doesn't bother you. That's the biggest point when you are choosing the baton. If you don't feel like you are going to carry it every single day, the chances are the one day that you will not get it from the backpack or from the home will be the one that uh, you will need the most. Keep that in mind when you will be choosing the baton that will suit you the best. So the second point would be the one that you can practice with. So obvious. Why are we saying this? Well, for example, like we said before, if you did pick, for example, a heavier baton, will you actually want to practice with it every single day? Maybe you won't, but the problem comes with the weight. What is the most important part? The draw, the open and the strikes. And you need to do at least thousand strikes with the baton so we can be confident with the strikes, at least a little bit more. But if it's too heavy, you won't be able to do thousand attempts every single day. You're gonna get tired and you will not want to train. The training needs to be hard, but enjoyment as well. It needs, you have to enjoy the training. With heavy baton, I don't think you will be enjoying the training or you're not even going to be able to train thousand times like you need to. Another one could be the log mechanism because many people pick uh, something like maybe ESP and then once they practice their draw and opening and strike, they need to close it. And how do you most of the time need to close it? Well, by the way of smashing to the ground a couple of times before it closes. After a long time, it's going to be a lot of trouble. Why? Because you will practice it 10 times and then you will again be thinking, well, I have to go outside, smash it to the ground or smash it together to close it. After some time, you will get tired of it and you are not going to practice 1000 times every single day, right? So that's another huge problem when picking a baton. Pick the one that will suit you with training so you can do the thousand strikes. You can do the thousand draws and lock it or close it very easily. That's the key point when choosing the right baton. So another qualities that you are definitely going to be looking for is the size. So what size should I pick? You have multiple options. You have the smallest one, uh, which in this case is going to be about 12 inches. What's the problem? Uh, baton, like we said, is for reach. If I, for example, do carry a knife with me and I am attacking with a knife. Here, I can still step even while being hit to the head. I can go through. Benefit is he's going to be quick, of course. He's going to be very fast with it. It's very low profile. Keep in mind that I can still step. If we would, for example, go at the same time, I will get hit, but I will get the first step as well. That will be for the smallest one. Then you can go for what we recommend, something like 16 to 18 inches. It's going to be incomparable, something like this. Now, 
I am not able to stab anymore, but he can actually hit me to the head. If we change it to the uh, hand, now the distance is even more further. Still very fast, but the distance has changed a lot. The biggest one would be about 21 inches. So the longest one, the one that he's going to be the slowest with, but as you can see, I'm very far away, I can't hit. If we would go to the hand, it's so big that I'm not even close. He's going to be more slow with it. It's going to be way more visible for the attacker. And yeah, you can see the speed is uh, definitely not there. Of course, impact power with this one, incredible. When it comes to being quick with it, you will lose a lot. Here you can see the comparison between all those three. We definitely do recommend the nice and middle one. It's your choice, but if it was up to us, definitely choose the 16 to 18 inches. Another one would be the weight. Why do you carry your baton? For the reach, but impact power also. We carry it because we don't want to fight with our hands. We know that the baton strike definitely hurts a lot more than hit with your hands. Of course, imagine small girl, you put the smallest one into her hand. The impact power is still there. Does the little girl want to defend with a very small hammer? or a big hammer. Take that into consideration. The impact power of the smallest one will not be there as much. Of course, it can still break a hand, of course. Now it will depend who is carrying it. Because if Peter is grabbing it, of course he can break arms. Small girl? We don't think so. That, when uh, the bigger one comes into play, you will have a lot more impact power with still this almost the same amount of speed. The biggest one, or the one that weighs the most, will have the most impact power. It can definitely shatter bones very easily. Like we said before, you're slower with it. Take into consideration the size and the weight. Think about it. Of course, we do recommend uh, batons not only for men, women, but of course for kids as well. If a small girl does have very small baton, the impact power will probably not be there as much. You give her too large and too heavy baton, it will be something like if she would be having a sledgehammer. She won't even be able to use it. So that's again why we are going for the nice middle route, because even a small child Peter knows because he, uh, of course, gave it to his daughter a couple of times and she was really able to open it and strike with it. So that means it's even good for children. So then it definitely is good for you even. What we meant to say with this one is we recommend it for kids because of the size and the weight, not on the reason, okay, give your child a weapon, uh, the baton. Of course, she will be able to do damage with it and break hands. That's why we are talking about the size. They're not mentally ready for being able to recognize, okay, some stranger wants to kidnap me and oh, my schoolmate is making fun of me. Don't take it the wrong way. We recommend it because they, even small kid would be able to use it, but we do not recommend for your kid to give her a baton, of course. So another thing that you will definitely need to consider is what grip am I supposed to choose? Well, basically you can pick between two. The first one is the rubber one. The advantage of this one is definitely it's uh, going to be more stable in your hand. Uh, for example, when there is a bleeding, uh, it will definitely be a lot harder uh, to slip it away from your hand. Why we are saying it? Because you need to count with blood as well. So the rubber one for that one is very good. It's going to be a little bit more thicker, a little bit more visible for other people. Advantage, it will not slip as easily, but it's thicker, bigger profile. Then you can go for the second one that doesn't have rubber on it. What is that going to typically mean? It's going to be a lot less thicker, but then again, like we said before, it's going to slip way more easily. With blood, this one can definitely fly from your hand a lot easier than the first one. It's going to be a lot less thicker, quicker with it, faster with it, and less of a profile for your attacker to see. Why we are saying this, when, we, when it comes to the rubber one, it is going to be thicker, and because it's, it's harder to slip from your hand, the same goes for your pocket. If you want to draw it from your pocket, it's going to be way harder. Advantage in hand, but disadvantage in the pocket. The other way around is when you don't have a rubber one. It slips easy from your hand, but the same goes for your trousers from your pocket. Very easily, very quick. You can see one advantage and one disadvantage. Take that into consideration. And that's, guys, why we will always recommend the one without rubber, because most of the people don't have problem with strikes. They have problem with drawing and opening, mostly drawing. And this will definitely resolve your problem. In a high stress situation where the technique is a little bit off, this one will definitely save you the trouble of, oh, I can't even get it out of my pocket. So that's why we will always recommend the one without the rubber grip. Another thing would be, how do I actually carry it? You have two options. You either have the holster. In this case, it will make uh, the drawing of the weapon a lot easier than from your pocket, especially with the rubber one. Look at the other side, look how visible it is. This is mostly typical for policemen, maybe security guards, because everyone knows that they do have a weapon. For you, the important part is having it hidden. With this one, uh, it's a lot harder to actually keep it hidden all the way. You can see it is very, very visible. That's why holsters are great, but we do not really recommend them. We would definitely much rather if you would uh, carry something with a clip, 
why? Still, very quick draw, like you saw before, but we can definitely show it again. You can definitely draw very quick, even if you do have a clip, not a holster, and it's a lot less visible. If you would, for example, turn around here and show, you can see it's a lot less visible and the draw is the same speed. So that's why, again, we are going to definitely recommend you the one that does have a clip and not carrying it with a holster like a policeman. So, and it wouldn't be us if we didn't give you specific brands, maybe from what to choose from. The first one would be ESP. Basically, they are the most best in prices. They are not very expensive. They are very durable, so we can even hit trees with it. Practice like that. But uh, the biggest disadvantage with this one is they are very, very heavy. For everyday carry, I don't think you would really want to carry this in your pockets every single day. Then there is ASP. With this one, it's definitely a lot lighter than the ESP one. But uh, with this one, what we really have to mention is the price, especially here in Europe. It's very expensive. It's one of the most expensive batons that we have. It is a lot lighter, so that's a big advantage, but the price is very big factor as well. And now what we definitely do recommend from our side is definitely the next one. Why? Well, because it does have all the qualities that we mentioned. Uh, it is very light. It is not as durable as the ESP. So definitely do not go and hit trees. It's good for training, for example, like maybe on a bob, you won't be able to hit trees with it. So again, durability, a lot less, but for normal people, civilian, they want to have something for self-defense, next one is pretty good because it checks all the categories, which is the ones we are looking at Sorudo for the best baton. It will always be your choice. Which baton are you going to pick? We now gave you some uh, maybe comparisons, some advantages and disadvantages. Every single baton will either have some advantage and some disadvantage. There's no clear, this is the winner in all the categories. Definitely not. But we did recommend you the next one. So definitely you can check link down below for maybe buying the next one. We hope that we helped you with picking your baton. Definitely share it with other people so even they can choose what baton is the best for them. Like always the comment section is yours so write what you agree with what you don't disagree with and maybe what is the best button for you at least what you think definitely subscribe to our channel so you can see more content exactly like this and we will see you in the next one thanks for watching bye